So hey guys, my name is Rishabh Singh, a first year medical student from Eastern Medical College and Hospital, Comella. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, so please go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I try to provide you some educational video related to MBBS. I hope you will gain or acquire something new at the end of it. If you like, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment below. Guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to talk about the kidney. So coming to today's topic, kidney. Its synonym is REN, which is kidney in Latin. Nephros, which is kidney in Greek language. Now coming to the introduction part of kidney. The kidney are two bean-shaped reddish-brown organ with the ab uh, within the abdomen situated on the posterior abdominal wall. So kidney is situated in posterior abdominal wall. They are excretory organ and remove the waste product of protein metabolism and the excess of water salts from the blood thus for maintaining the electrolyte and water balance so uh, they help in the electrolyte and water balance they secrete renin 1 to 5 dihydroxy calciferol they also help in erythropoiesis they help to maintain the acid base balance of the body now coming to anatomical position of the kidney so Suppose when you will have the viscera, then you will say this is the kidney with the ureter and the renal vessels. The convex anterior surface directed laterally, the flat posterior surface directed medially, the upper pole lies 2.5 cm away from the midline, hilum lies 5 cm away from the midline, lower pole lies 7.5 cm away from the midline, as the hilum shows before backward renal vein renal artery and the pelvis of the ureter and ureter show no twisting in this the ureter show no twisting now coming to shape and measurement and the location of kidney so coming to shape and measurement so basically its shape is bean shaped its measurement is length is 11 centimeter left kidney is slightly longer and narrower its width is 6 centimeter thickness is anterior superior anterior posterior it is 3 centimeter and weight in case of male it is 150 gram and in case of female it is 135 gram location is lumbar region now we will talk about the external feature of the kidney so as you can see in the diagram kidney have two poles upper pole lower pole two surface anterior surface and you can see the dot structure it represent the back structure that is posterior surface two borders and uh, medial border and the lateral border then it consists of hilum here the hilum is there so as you can see the diagram this represents the external feature of the kidney vertebral level of the kidney is thoracic 12 to lumbar 3 vertebra and its location in the nine region of abdomen it is represented in right hypochondrium region ap gastric region left hypochondrium region umbilical region right and left lumbar region so as i discussed the external features of the kidney you can see two poles superior pole which is related to suprarenal gland, gland or adrenal gland inferior or lower pole which is related to iliac crest two surface anterior surface and posterior surface anterior surface face anterior laterally posterior surface face posterior medially and two borders medial border and lateral border medial border is convex and lateral border is also convex medial border presents the vertical fissures that is called hilum or hilus now coming to hilum so the medial border central part of the kidney presents a deep vertical slit called hilum it transmit before backward the following structure renal vein renal artery renal pelvis and subsidiary branch of the renal artery so these are the structure which transmit before backward now structure that enter the hilum are renal artery nerve plexus lymphatics structure that emerges from the hilum are renal vein pelvis of ureter and lymphatics as you can see in the diagram clearly mentioned uh, it is the renal vein it is the renal artery and you can also see the renal pelvis and you can also see that thing in uh, this diagram that it, this is the renal artery this is the subsidiary branch of the renal artery this is the renal pelvis and this is renal vein now coming to anterior relation of kidney as you can see in the diagram this diagram represent the anterior relation of kidney so anterior relation of right kidney as you can see the diagram of right kidney this is suprarenal area this is hepatic area this is duodenal area this green area is folic area and this blue area is digital area so 
the anterior elution of the right kidney is right suprarenal gland from the suprarenal area right lobe of liver from the hepatic area second part of duodenum from duodenal area hepatic right colic flexor from colic area and jejunum from the jejunal area now coming to the left kidney as you can see in the diagram suprarenal area represent left suprarenal gland in anterior elution of left kidney gastric area represent the stomach splenic area represent spleen and pancreatic area represent pancreas and splenic vessels and colic area represent left colic flexor and uh, of course jejunal area represent jejunum now one more important point in anterior relation of right kidney liver and jejunum out of them are separated by the peritoneum and in anterior relation of left kidney out of these stomach spleen jejunum are separated from the kidney by the peritoneum so they are separated by peritoneum as kidney is retroperitoneal organ so what is retroperitoneal organ the organ which covered by the peritoneum on the anterior surface and devoid of peritoneum on the posterior surface is called the retroperitoneal organ other retroperitoneal organ are rectum pancreas aorta ascending colon descending colon etc now coming to posterior surface relation of the kidney posterior surface relation of two kidney are same both exactly are same but there is a difference in right kidney is related to one rib right kidney is related to one rib while the left kidney is related to two ribs leaving it all the relation of posterior surface is same so this is the posterior relation of the left and right kidney so the posterior relation of the left and right kidney is same but in left kidney as you can see 11th and 12th rib is related however in right kidney only 12th rib is there so the what is the posterior relation which are same in both kidney there are four muscles diaphragm then quadratus lumborum sphagnum major and transverse abdominis however there are three nerves which are same in both the kidney and they are the relation of posterior surface that are subcostal thoracic 12 nerve as you can see here subcostal vessel and nerve this is the subcostal thoracic 12 nerve then il ilio hypogastric nerve as you can see ilio hypogastric nerve root value number 1 and ilio inguinal nerve you can see here so these are same in both the structures now uh, one or two rib is also related so in the left kidney 11th and 12th rib is related however in right kidney only 12th rib is related so this is the summary of posterior relation of the left and right kidney now coming to capsules or covering of kidney from within outward the kidney is surrounded by four capsules so there are four covering of the kidney which surround the kidney like fibrous capsule which is called true capsule perirenal or perinephric fat that is adipose capsule renal fascia that is false capsule pararenal or paranephric fat so these are the covering of the kidney or the capsule of the kidney so we are going to discuss each and every capsule that is fibrous first capsule is fibrous capsule that is true capsule thin membranous which closely invests the kidney it is formed by the condensation of fibrous connective tissue in the peripheral part of the organ now coming to pararenal or paranephric fat which is also called adipose capsule because it is a layer of adipose tissue surrounding fibrous capsule of the kidney this fills uh, inside loosely fitting sheath of renal fascia enclosing the kidney now there is a disorder which is related to this part chronic debilitating disease this is de a depletion of perinephric fat can cause downward displacement of the kidney which may lead to the kinking of the ureter so you can see the kinking of the ureter in the diagram so this is chronic chronic debilitating disease so this is all about chronic debilitating disease now coming to renal fascia which is also called false capsule or fascia of gerita this is the fibro areola sheath which surround the kidney and the perirenal fat and it consists of two layer an ill defined anterior layer that is fascia of told a well defined posterior relation which is called fascia of zucker kaland Now coming to pararenal or paranephric fat layer of fat lying outside the renal fascia it fills the paravertebral gutter and form a cushion for the kidney so this is the cushion of the kidney pararenal or paranephric fat you all can refer this diagram for the capsule or the covering of kidney as you can see in the diagram this is a subcostal vein artery nerve this is ilio hypogastric nerve this is the 12th rib this is costal diaphragmatic this is pleura diaphragm uh, diaphragmatic fascia then there is suprarenal gland then see there is kidney then there is renal capsule then there is perinephric fat or the adipose fat then there is renal fascia which is fascia of gerota then there is paranephric fat so and uh, there is also the ileic crest and ilio inguinal nerve and the quadratus 
lumborum muscle so this represent the diagram for the capsule of kidney now coming to macroscopic structure of kidney it consists of outer cortex and inner medulla as you can see in the diagram it consists of outer cortex and the inner medulla so when the kidney is split longitudinally, uh, longitudinally it presents the kidney proper and the renal pelvis it has two parts kidney proper and the renal pelvis as you can see in the diagram this is the renal cortex this is renal pyramids which is called medulla this is the medullary rays this is the renal column this is the renal capsule and this is the uh, minor calyx these all are minor calyx which constitute to form major calyx and which open into renal pelvis and however it go to the ureter so this is the microscopic structure of the kidney so uh, renal cortex contents are collecting tubule pct dct glomerular ascending and descending loop of henle and renal medulla contents are loop of henle and duct of bellini so as i discussed about kidney proper so the kidney proper is the naked eye examination of kidney proper presents as outer cortex and inner medulla the cortex is located just below the renal capsules and extend between the renal pyram uh, pyramids wide infra as a renal column or the column of bertini the cortex appear pale yellow with granular texture the medulla so this is about the cortex outer cortex then this is about the medulla the medulla composed of 5 to 11 dark conical masses called renal pyramids which is called pyramid of malfigi the apices of the renal pyramids from the nipple like projection called the renal papilla which invaginate the minor calyx now coming to re uh, renal sinus it is a cavity of consider considerable size present within the kidney it take up the large part of the in uh, interior of the kidney and opens at the medial border of the kidney as hilus it contents so contents of renal sinus are greater part greater part of the renal pelvis major and minor calyx renal vessels lymphatic and nerves and also the fat the sinus is lined by the continuation of two capsules of kidney the major calyx are two or three number and are formed by the union of minor calyx as i discussed earlier and minor calyx is 7 to 13 in number so now coming to collecting tubule radiates from the renal pyramids into the cortical region to form the radial striations called medullary rays as you can refer this diagram this is the renal sinus and this is the kidney proper part these two constitutes the macroscopic structure of kidney so this is the renal sinus and this is the kidney proper which constitutes renal capsule renal cortex and renal medulla so now coming to microscopic structure histologically each kidney is composed of one to three million uriniferous tubules each tubule consists of two parts secretory parts and a collecting part so secretory parts this part include nephrons which are the structure and function of kidney they are responsible for the formation of urine by filtration of metabolic end products selective reabsorption and secretion of some material into tubule now coming to collecting part so correct coming to collecting part it includes the collecting tubule in which the nephron open the duct of bellini formed by the many collecting tubules they open into minor calyx through the summits of the renal papilla now coming to parts of nephron nephron consists of two parts renal capsules renal tubule renal capsules include bowman's capsule glomerulus renal tubule include pct loop of henle ascending loop of henle descending loop of henle dct collecting duct or the duct of bellini as you can refer this diagram the location of urinary ferrous tubule within the kidney this is the efferent arterial this is efferent arterial this is glomerulus this is bowman capsule this is pct this is the dct this is the pyramid this is the medulla part this is the cortex part this is the renal sinus part this is the renal papilla this is the minor calyx which will open into the major calyx this is the collecting duct or duct of bellini which is formed by many collecting duct combined to form the duct of bellini so total capacity of renal pelvis major and minor calyx is about the 8 ml so now coming to renal circulation so which type of circulation is renal circulation it is portal circulation which is arterial type mode of blood supply of kidney is each kidney receives blood from the its renal artery so each kidney divides into anterior and posterior division and then it divides into segmental artery which again uh, form the lobular artery one for each pyramid just before entering the kidney substance each divide into interlobular artery then at the level of cortico medullary junction they branch into arcuate artery interlobular artery efferent arterioles then glomerular capillary then pertubular capillary then efferent arterial from the majority of the glomerular then interlobular vein then arcuate vein then the interlobular vein then the renal vein so this completes the mode of the blood supply of the kidney so as you can see the diagram this is the glomeruli this is the renal capsule this is the interlobular artery this is the arcuate artery this is the interlobular artery and this is the lobular artery so now coming to vascular segments of the kidney according to graves 1954 on the basis of distribution of major branches of the renal artery each kidney is anatomically divided into five vascular segments each segment has its, has its own artery and between the segment there is no anastomosis or no connection is there the segments are apical upper middle lower and posterior so nomina anatomica descriptive 
terms are the more descriptive terms are superior anterior superior anterior inferior inferior posterior now coming to in hilum the renal artery divides into anterior division posterior division anterior division supply the apical segment the upper segment the middle segment and the lower segment however the posterior division supply the posterior segment so this is the basis for the distribution of the major branches of the renal artery and it divides the vascular segments so the junctional area that are supplied by anterior and posterior, uh, posterior division of the renal artery is called the brudel spine the junction area supplied by anterior posterior division of the renal artery called the brudel spine an important anatomical landmark brudel line on the posterior aspect of kidney at the junction of medial two third and lateral one third so the importance is it's functionally avascular it means there is no blood or blood supply is there so hence it is best side for the surgical incision to remove the renal stone nephrolithotomy so as you can refer this diagram as you can see the anterior branch and the posterior branch as you can see there are different vascular segment apical upper middle lower then apical upper this is the lateral view in which and this anterior view this lateral view in which you can see apical upper middle posterior lower and this is the brudel line on which the incision is made for the kidney stones this is the up then the posterior surface you can see middle upper apical posterior and lower vascular segment now coming coming to venous drainage of the kidney so the venous drainage from the kidney is drained by the renal veins right and left which open into inferior vena cava so what are the tributaries of left renal vein this is the most common asked question so uh, so the answer is left gonadal vein and the left suprarenal vein so now coming to lymphatic drainage of the kidney so the lymphatics from the kidney drain into the para aortic lumbar lymph node at the level of origin of lymph arteries now coming to nerve supply so supplied by the renal plexus of nerve each kidney along with the renal artery the sympathetic fibers derived from thoracic tend to lumbar one spinal segments are the symp sympathetic fiber and the parasympathetic fiber derived from the both the vagus nerves now coming to the development of the kidney so the development of the kidney is through the mesoderm is through the mesoderm and the excretory component develops from the metanephrosis or metanephric cap which consists of bowman's capsule proximal tubule loop of henle and distal tubule and the collecting system developed from the uretic bud and it consists of renal pelvis major and minor calyx and 1 to 3 million collecting tubules so now coming to common congenital anomaly lobulatory kidney the persistence of fetal lobulation in adult kidney it is of no clinical significance aberrant artery the persistence of one of the fetal arteries is common 30% individual especially in an artery from the aorta to the lower pole of the kidney now coming to congenital polycystic kidney so this is the uh, diagram of congenital polycystic kidney it is formed if the luminal community between the nephros and collecting duct fail to establish the glomeruli continue, uh, continue to excrete the urine which accumulate in tubules due to lack of the outlet now coming to horseshoe kidney this is found one in 800 it occurs due to the uh, fusion of lower poles of the kidney as you can see in the diagram the fusion of lower poles of the kidney and the uterine pass anterior to the isthmus so as you can see the diagram isthmus is there and both are both kidney are joined together now coming to renal agenesis this is one in 500 it occurs when the uretic bud fail to develop unilateral renal agenesis is relatively common a physician should never assume that a patient has two kidney why because when the renal agenesis occur then the unilateral renal agenesis is relatively uncommon uh, uh, relatively common so that's why physicians should assume should not assume that a patient has two kidney a surgeon must uh, confirm that fact before considering the nephrectotomy so coming to renal and uretic calculi also called urinary tract stones they occur most frequent in the men and women and associated with the sedentary lifestyle stone formation occurred by the aggregation of calcium phosphate oxalate urate soluble salt within the organic matrix small variation in the ph cause this salt to precipitate and form the small uh, and form the stones these stones be located in renal calyx ureter urinary bladder and brudel's line is used for the surgical removal of these stones now coming to renal or uretic colic waves of sharp and intense phase caused by the renal dysfunction of the stone in the kidney is called renal or uretic colic now and coming to floating kidney hyper mobility of the kidney the kidney is kept in the position by the peritoneal fat and renal fascia however each kidney moves down with the respiration so it is the amount of perinephric fat that is reduced to the mobility of kidney become excessive floating kidney a floating kidney can move up and down but not side within the renal fascia now coming to renal trauma injury to kidney which lead to the blood loss is called renal trauma now coming to transplantation of kidney it is now a common procedure it is done in the patient with esrd now what is esrd and stage of renal failure uh, renal failure disease now coming to surface marking of the kidney as you can see this is the moric parallelogram it is done with the parallelogram of morris which is draw in the following ways first is two horizontal line at the level of t11 and at the level of 
lumbar three spine then the two vertical lines as you can see uh, seen in the diagram one 2.5 centimeter away and one nine point one two five centimeter and one nine point five centimeter then the two then the center of the hilum of each kidney lie approximately at the lower border of l1 so the hilum lie at the lower border of l1 as you can see in the figure so uh, talk talking about the incision given median vertical incision extending from the t11 to t12 they make the horizontal incision extending from the upper and lower border of the vertical incision now coming to layers to be reflected to reach the kidney the following structure can be reflected by one by one in the order to expose the kidney first is skin then superficial skin the posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia which is also attached to lactimus side or side situs situs posterior inferior muscle and erector spiny or sacrospinalis muscle middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia quadratus lumborum muscle and anterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia now coming to the axis of kidney long axis is directed downwards and laterally transfer axis directly laterally and downwards which kidney is higher and why left kidney is high due to the presence of liver on the right side which kidney near to the midline and why left kidney is due to the pressure of paracolic gutter now what is paracolic gutter space between the colon and the abdominal wall what is the vertebral level of kidney thoracic 12 and lum to lumbar 3 ribs relation of kidney left kidney is related to 11th and 12th rib and right kidney is related to 12th rib now what is the renal angle the angle between the lower border of 12th rib and outer border of erector spine is called as renal angle. Site is it overlies the lower part of the kidney. Tenderness in the kidney is elected by the applying pressure over the angle within the thumbs. Now coming to renal pain is referred to in, uh, infra umbilical part of abdomen. Renal is supplied by thoracic 12 to lumbar 1 spinal nerve as, as infra umbilical part also supplied from thoracic 1 to lumbar 1 spinal nerve. So same innervation of lumbar 12 to L1 spinal segment that is why renal pain is referred to infra umbilical part now coming to difference between the proximal and distal convoluted tubule microvilli present in the proximal convoluted tubule and it is also called the brush border epithelium what is lobes and lobules of kidney lobes of kidney one pyramid capped with the adjoining cortex is called the lobe of kidney so what is lobules of kidney the area of conical on each side by the interlobular blood vessel presenting in the central axis is a single material layer called the lobules of kidney why renal artery is longer and why Right renal artery is longer because the abdominal artery lies on the left side. What is juxta glomerular apparatus? Special myothelial cells, JG cells, agranulacid cells, and macrodensa form the juxta glomerular apparatus. Structurally, they are which type basic tissue? Efferent arterial JG cells are muscular tissue, DCT, macrodensa are epithelial tissue, however, less cells is connective tissue. What is the phagocytic cell of the kidney? It is mesenganal cell. Now, coming to the cells of the kidney, uh, in nephron, loop of hand and parietal layer of glomerulus is lined by the simple squamous epithelium and rest part of the nephron is lined by the simple cuboidal epithelium. So this completes our topic on kidney gross anatomy. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, then don't, don't, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is MBBS Studies with Rishabh Singh. Thank you.